How many of you, by round of applause, have never had your heart broken by another human being? Oh, oh I like that sound. We could all hang. It means we're all people. You ever meet someone who's never had their heart broken? You're like, oh, it's coming. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this. It'll happen one day. It's necessary. It's, it's a step that is necessary to become a full human being. Like, we're, human beings are like glow sticks. We can't truly shine until someone cracks us. That's a fact. It's a scientific fact. <laughs> yeah. like, and you want it to happen when you're younger. You want it to get it out of the way when you're young. If, the older you are, the, the more the chance there is it might kill you. You know what I mean? It's like, like chicken pox. <laughs> like, sometimes I, I, I travel so much, sometimes I meet couples. Like, you know what I mean? Like, in their 30s, who are like, nope, never had my heart broken. We've been together since we were 13. I'm like, man, this one's gonna suck. <laughs> Fuck. We're all gonna read about this one. <laughs> Happened to me when I was 20 years old. That was the first time I had my heart broken. 20 years old, ripe age. It's my first love. She told me I was too emotional. <laughs> Too emotional. The fuck does that even fucking mean? You know what I mean? Too emotional. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just trying to open up and love you like you wanted <laughs> all the time. Jesus. Too, whatever. It's fine, though. I mean, it's totally cool. I, you know, she didn't have to leave, but that's whatever. We could have been friends. It's fine. Fuck her. It's totally chill. Too emotional. <laughs> you know? It's bullshit. It's a bullshit excuse. But it hurt. I spent weeks in the doldrums, a broken young man, and I decided the best way to get over it all was to see some titties. <laughs> was to see some naked titties that belonged to other women, AKA go to a strip club for the first time. Now, I grew up in the metropolitan area of New Orleans, Louisiana, all right? There's no shortage of strip clubs in New Orleans. I mean, world famous Bourbon Street's got two or three, five. It's got eight. It's nine strip clubs total. About 12 on the whole block, really. There's roughly 15 in the French Quarter alone. A couple of those are off-bourbon strip clubs, by the way, which are a lot like off-Broadway theaters, if you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're gonna pay less to get in, but you're gonna be pretty confused by what you're watching on the stage. And there will be a smoke machine. <laughs> and all the strip clubs in the French Quarter are, are named like Rick's Cabaret and Hustler Club and Barely Legal and Deja Vu and Visions and Dixieland Divas. I didn't go to any of those places though. I didn't even go to the French Quarter. For my first strip club experience, I went 33 miles north of the city to a little suburb called Slidell, Louisiana, where there's a gem of a gentleman's club called Scuttlebutt. <laughs> Scuttlebutt. Now, for years, I thought that was just the stupidest named strip club ever. Like the guy was like, I want someone in the, I want him to scuttle in to see some butt. Bam, names itself. But scuttlebutt's an actual word. The definition of that word is a rumor or gossip. So that makes me wonder if the owner was that sort of dude with a top hat. Like, pardon me, gentlemen and scholars alike. Behind these doors, 33 miles north of the city, be scantily clad women of the night, willing to spit shine the knob on your front side for me a pennies on the dollar, or so that be the scuttlebutt. <laughs> but guess what? It was a dump, because you <laughs> And like, the thing is, I was, I was 20, I was 20 years old, so technically too young. In any other state, that's too young to get into a bar or a strip club. In Louisiana, too young to get into a bar slash strip club doesn't exist. <laughs> like the bouncers in Louisiana, when you hand them our, your ID, they're not looking for your, your date of birth, they're just paying attention to how much confidence you hand it to them with. 
That's how they judge your age. And I handed my ID to that dude like I was in my fucking 50s. I walked in. I, I, I went to the bar. I ordered a PBR off the imported beer list. <laughs> imported from Milwaukee, motherfucker. <laughs> and then I sat at the, the, the stage and just like flicked dollar bills at the strippers, not even looking at them. Cause I was that level of heartbroken where I couldn't even look at another woman cause the female figure just reminded me of her. Oh, she had a stomach too. <laughs> I was broke. I was fucking 20 years old. So like every like third flick, there was just nothing there. <laughs> you know, I just did the motion. You know, my morale was low. No need for theirs to be as well. <laughs> and like I said, I couldn't even look at him. I was just listening to the cavalcade of strippers and the DJ announcing them all like, all right, fellas, here she comes. Give it up for Crystal. Spelt with a K. You could tell by the way he said it. All right, fellas, show your love for cacophony. <laughs> also spelled with a K, probably two Ks. And then here she comes, it's Ebony. White girl. <laughs> White girl named Ebony, stripping. Don't know if she had a black boyfriend or just no clue what the word Ebony fucking meant. <laughs> and then... Here she is, Nancy. Nancy? That's a change in gears. Nancy, that's not a stripper name. Was she using her real name? Was she that good at stripping? Or was her real name already too strippery and she had to dial it back? Like maybe her real name was Seaman. spelt C-I-E-M-Y-N-N. -N. But in her case, probably also spelt with a K and pronounced with a soft C. It's a Gaelic name, everyone knows it. And unlike every stripper before her, who, you know, had, they'd come out dancing to like Ja Rule or Metallica or Guns N' Roses or Three Six Mafia, Nancy came out dancing to this song by the Goo Goo Dolls called Iris. <laughs> Exactly. And if you can honestly admit that just once in your life, that song, when played out of nowhere, didn't get you, well, I guess the world saw you and it didn't understand. I looked up and Nancy was already looking at me. We made eye contact and it was amazing. It was like a warm feeling. Like, she could see right through me. Obviously, I was a broken person. That's why I was in a strip club. But it was like I could see through her as well. She was also a broken person. That's why she was a stripper. See, people clam up on that part. I don't understand why. I can almost feel the judgment of like, what, are you, are you trying to imply that all strippers are broken people? Yes, yes, I absolutely am. And there's, ab there's nothing wrong with that. I believe I just established that I am a broken person. We are all broken people. Broken people are the real fucking deal. She was more human than most humans. Which is a song by White Zombie that, had, you know, Cacophony had danced to earlier. But there was so... There was something so amazing about this glance I had with Nancy, and she starts dancing, and her top comes off, and there they are, those titties. The titties I'd come to see. But now they were more than just titties. They were breasts. They were beautiful breasts. They nourish us as children. They please us as adults. This was somewhere in between. And she looks back at me and we make eye contact again. And it was like I was looking into the eyes of someone who I'd known for thousands of years since time began. Like the last time we spoke was centuries ago and our last words to one another were, find me in the next life. <laughs> and here we were finding each other in the next life. 
It was so powerful. I could tell it was such a powerful thing, even for her, because she looked away and danced around some more, but she couldn't keep her eyes away from me. She looked back at me, and we made eye contact again, and it was like a bridge of light between us. I felt my heart mend in that moment and start pounding five times faster than it ever had, pumping 10 times the blood through this body that was now 20 times the size it had ever been. I was a man now, maybe for the first time, because of her, because of Nancy. I found her, my soul mate this life we would have together would make up for all the pain of every life before this it would be amazing we would travel the world and show it the possibilities of love and then i'm in a headlock i'm in a headlock <laughs> right it was the bouncer he's got me in a headlock he's escorting me out he saw it he saw it. He saw the connection. That's why he was throwing me out, because he knew. He knew the prophecy was true. He knew why I had come to free Nancy. That's why. I almost felt sorry for this fucking fool. He had no clue who he had just put his hands on. And we get outside, and he makes the mistake of releasing me. And I whirl around, angry, ready to destroy everything that stood between her and I, starting with that fucking mortal. <laughs> and he very calmly goes, hey, hey, I can't have you in there crying, dude. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Man. Maybe I am too emotional. I didn't tell anybody about that for years. <laughs> Pretty humiliating. <laughs>